breaking news. This just in. All three posts of 8-Bits did indeed survive PAX. Hello, what is up? Happy Friday. Welcome to version 3.0 of 8-Bits. And although I can still feel the tickle in, my, in like my throat, I still, you know, I, I lost my voice. I definitely slowed down a little bit post-PAX. Had a great time. I got to see both of you guys there. It's like, wow, these are real people. Uh, they, they exist. Yeah. This is awesome. <laughs> And uh, yeah, <laughs> we, we get to talk about all that and more. I was looking at our games list today and I'm like, holy hell, I don't think I've ever seen it this long. So guys, I hope you're, uh, I hope you're in for uh, a treat today and buckle up. We're, we're, we're ready to go. So guys, what, what's up? How, how are things? Well, we both had our ears blown out, so oh we're good. God. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> let's yeah. Just, let's just say I had a kind of loud. I had a few settings, not. <laughs> Like not <laughs> adjusted for the show, and when I started this music, uh, apparently yeah. it was not. Me and dance Jeff are, party. are having a pleasant conversation about one of the games we'll be talking about later, and all of a sudden we just da da. We're just like, oh god, what's happening? <laughs> my bad, my bad. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so the first thing I learned at, at PAX uh, upon meeting you guys is is you're both hella tall. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's true. Sorry. I didn't know that. Sorry. We no, are. I'm like the short one on the show, and I'm almost six feet tall. I, I'm 5'11 and a half. I didn't quite hit six. I, I don't a know Psychological why. scar my whole life. It is that way, but it is so funny because, I mean, Jeff, the I know for me, I'm sure JP got it plenty and still gets it, is the, oh, my gosh, I didn't realize you were this tall in real life. And it's yeah. just like, yeah, I know. I've it heard it. I've heard it. I just want to wear a button that says, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Sorry. I'm this. I'm, I'm this tall. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah, I, I learned that uh, Jeff Green is actually pretty ripped. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks to <the> giant bomb <laughs> panel. <laughs> yeah, I heard about that. <laughs> this so, is true, right? So yeah, are we gonna hear about that? Oh my later? god, I was hoping this wouldn't come up. I really <laughs> let's, let's zip right. Back. It's gonna come up. Talk man. about games. <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna come all right where where are we gonna start i, I mean obviously uh, but uh, it was a that was an amazing show i i um my bad we i guess there's skype lag or something a little bit a little bit of lag there but that's okay it'll, yeah there is go. some weird lag i know hopefully it'll that it'll work noise. itself out well, well it'll work yep. itself out it always does um so yeah, I mean, Pax was Pax was great. I I kind of think. I mean, are we just gonna sort of jump into it based off of what we've been playing? Because I know a lot of my stuff comes from from Pax. Well, should we? Yeah, let's just start off with Pax. I mean, my my Pax is very short, and at least to talk about. Um, <laughs> I was on the show floor for thirty minutes, and then I drank for forty eight hours, and it was fun. You had... messages me the day after, and he's like. Man, I haven't drank that much in a long, long time. I, I like, did. I did. There was a lot of, uh, there was definitely a lot of drinking uh, going on, I, I, I have to say. Uh, but it's good times. It's like, uh, it's very rare when you get to just sit down with these people and, you know, enjoy a drink and have a nice conversation that's not over fucking Skype or, you know, something like that. So it's it's uh, the one time I think you can do yep. that. Uh, now, do you yep. walk the, you walk the floor. A little bit, JP. At least, like yeah. you gave it the once over. Um, I would ask, and, and maybe we just throw it out there, but like, you, anyone want to say what their the most impressive thing they saw at PAX was? Um, I didn't get to play it. I didn't get to watch it that much, but, or, or sorry, see it that much, but just the Evolve booth itself was probably the most impressive oh looking my God. part of the show. Holy crap! Yeah, it. Uh, and from what I heard, everyone that played that loved it. That they were talking about yeah. strategies the entire time of what they were doing and like how how cool it was that someone actually made it fun where you could play the monster and stuff like that. So I didn't play it myself, but that's that's what everyone was buzzing about at least at, at the bar. So <laughs> I did don't you know. Mine was very long. No, I, I I didn't wait in any of the triple A lines because they were just too long. Um, and I I did also learn now that I guess Super Giant counts as triple a at least as far as these shows go because that was a two hour line too to see uh transistor oh yeah uh which looked amazing i mean i saw it last year at pax i'm super psyched for it but i couldn't get into any of the, the i mean i could have but i didn't want to wait that long yeah i 
I'm I think I'm that guy when it comes to evolve. Like until it's in my hands, I just I can't really wrap my head around it. I feel like I can see how oh my gosh, going and playing it at packs, it's fun. But like I have right. this I have <laughs> this issue. I look at the game and I saw all the footage and stuff. And I'm like, this game seems to me like after 15 hours, it's yeah. seen and yeah. done it all. And and I'm so not sure. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know yet. When people pitch the idea of like it's Left for Dead, I immediately like I enjoyed Left for Dead for about an hour, and then I was just like, "What? This is fucking boring! Like, what am I doing? <laughs> I'm not having any fun." In my friend, we've already figured out this level. Like, let's go to the next one. This is not fun at all. So it, if they yeah. somehow like figured out that mechanic and made it fun to play, I mean, the I'm into the it. difference between be that is that Left for Dead has a ridiculously unbelievable modding community. And so mm, if you're a true. fan of Left 4 Dead, it's like there's an unending like sea of content of just this map and this map and remakes. And and so, I, you know, I don't think that that's a, p a part of this game. And so while I appreciate the nod to sort of the game type, I really have this sort of feeling that it's going to be like, oh, awesome. And then it just, gonna, you know, like next game. But who knows? I right. I, don't know. I mean, you're right. Historically, that that you know, that's how it has always gone, right? So, I mean, hopefully, they know that, and hopefully, that's one of the challenges they're trying to overcome. Is like, how do we sustain this throughout? Hopefully, we'll see, right? I mean, who knows? These things, things like this, always demo well at shows like this, because of course, they spend so much time to make sure they look good at shows yeah. like this. Yeah. And then you know, it's so often the case that like. <clears throat> That's what they blew all their creative energy on, and it doesn't sustain over 12, 20, 50 hours. But we'll see. All right. You question. know, one doesn't want to be too, too cynical. Sure. Yeah, of course, of course. And I don't mean, but I, all right, I want to throw this on right, my team. Right, right. Remove the giant monster. Is that booth as <laughs> popular as it is? I'm just curious. Like, they have this massive 20 it was massive. foot. G huge Massive. beast that you were in the game. I just yeah. wonder if that wasn't there would have had the same draw. It, it's a great question. Um, I mean, certainly that was the thing when you walk onto the show floor or when you're above the show floor, just coming down uh, for, for folks who weren't at PAX, you know, that the show floor was recessed below the main entrance. So as you right. walk in the main entrance, you could see the whole show floor from above. And that monster was fucking towering over the whole show. Yeah. Um, but, you know, my, my feeling on that thing is it's always, it, it always feels a little bit like kind of like the, uh, if you have to do that sort of thing, maybe there isn't as much, subs like, how much money did that thing cost? Did yeah. they really have to do that? I, I don't want to be that <laughs> cynical again, but it's sort of like, well, maybe if you spend a little less on the, you know, 20 foot giant monster <laughs> at the show, maybe did that take out of the game budget? I don't even want to know. Right. You know? Yeah. Uh, I totally feel sentiments on that one, but all right. Uh, like, like it was a lot. So <laughs> did what Jeff, what was your sort of JP? You kind of threw out evolve. Yeah. What, what, I mean, what, I didn't uh, play a single thing. So. Right. Right. <laughs> what about you? Um, my games were all uh, were all indies, really, because those were the ones I could see. You know, right. I could get my hands on them and talk to the developers and get up close. And you know, I don't know if none of them were like so like utterly mind blowing that you know I, I you know like you know peed in my pants or anything. Right. Uh, but uh, but I did see a number that were really uh, super fun and looked super great. And I'll I'll throw out a few here. Uh, one was. Um, Lovers in a Dangerous Space Time. I don't know if you saw this. Uh, I heard, it was, I heard uh, the name, but I didn't see what it actually was. It, it was great. There's like three or four I'm going to mention that were all Canadian, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, Canada had a particularly good show. Uh, and Lovers in a Dangerous Space Time is sort of like uh, FTL, so that immediately grabbed me oh. when I heard that. Oh. But but it's, it's uh, real time. It's not turn-based, and it's co-op. And you've basically got one person at one part of the ship and another person at another part of the ship. And shit is just happening all the time. And you have to physically, you are one of the characters on the ship. And you have to, you know, go to the turrets or go to other places in the ship and do it in uh, in real time as you're being attacked. 
Um, it's very hard to describe. Was it? Um, but, no, I mean, but it, along with, I think you nailed it actually yeah. on the description. Is it? Is this uh, think, just PC at this point? P, I think it's PC, and I want to say, and uh, I apologize to them if I got it wrong, but I want to say it's PS4. Oh, maybe, okay. Okay. And PC, I could I could be wrong about that, oh, or maybe that's just what right they were ta talking about. PC, Mac, got and it? Mac, actually. Oh, PC so, Mac. Okay. Maybe, but... Well, that's not quite the P PS4. Um, I'm sure. And Sony it's got will a great look. After. It's got a great, uh, super colorful, uh, almost psychedelic color palette. Uh, it had a yeah. goofy sense of humor. It was just really, really fun to play. Um, and it also uh, just had a nice, different sort of look and feel than uh, than almost anything else I saw at, at the show. So uh, just very lighthearted, but uh, challenging. And then uh, uh, just a couple others quickly. That I mentioned, that I saw, that I love was Darkest Dungeon. Uh, this is a totally different style of game. It was like a, uh, uh, it's a procedural dungeon crawler, but it's done. Uh, it, it's super, super old school, but it's got a great kind of like uh, low fantasy, uh, very uh, arty uh, look to it. Um, <clears throat> so that was another one from that was from Canada, and then. The third one, which always I've seen it twice now at these shows, and it always gets a great crowd. Uh, uh, I'm gonna forget the name, but it's the one. Uh, maybe you guys saw it. It's the it's the dungeon crawler that uses a dance pad. Oh, oh it's yeah. called Crypt of the Necromancer. Yeah, or right. Necromancer, which or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, it. Wonderful. Like I don't know what it's what it's actually gonna be like to play at home, but this game is so great at conventions to watch. To watch people dungeon crawling on a dance pad, you know, I don't know if that's something I want to do by myself at home, uh, but it, it certainly demos well. And and what I like about it too is like, and I think I thought this about a lot of the 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 uh, <clears throat> the indie games, and this is no major like genius insight, but there's just so much uh, innovation happening in that space as opposed to the AAA. It's just fun right. to watch. It's just fun to watch all these guys able to just make the game that's in their head and then actually be able to see it released, you know, thanks to Steam and Steam Greenlight and, and other avenues. It's just like, you know, it's like such a great time to be a gamer and a game developer. Uh, it was so cool to be able to be at that show and just see so much stuff from little companies that look good and that we're actually going to be able to find it and play it. Yeah. Um, and that that's you know, actually one of the reasons why PAX is, is so awesome even in, in comparison to something like e3 because it, it, it's an it could, it's an investment to get into e3 but when pax not yeah. only has the booth space available but then they also have uh you know the the folks from the local boston indie uh scene come in and have something and then of course the indicate and it just uh the indie mega booth it it's all it's all fantastic yeah i, yep. I agree with you right uh, so i i had one that was like this did was that was that your last one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. um, did you see Fract? Mm -mm. So Fract must, is actually must coming have been out. Away. It, it's coming out next week, and every time I saw this game, it just had me like, it had me stopped in my tracks and mesmerized. And it's um, <laughs> wow. It is um, the best way I can describe it. I'll show you. Uh, uh, I'll at least bring up the some of the uh, the the web page, um, but it is. Um, gosh, how do you describe it? It's a musical uh, game of exploration, let's say. It's sort of like antechamber, but remove mm -hmm. the you st – it's like a thinking game, but it uses music in a lot of the puzzles. And you're sort of wow. creating music that goes along with the soundtrack. So – it does offer like a totally different experience for everyone based off of what you'll hear. And that, that to huh. me is just, I mean, how you set out to create a game like that, I do not know. Um, but, uh, it's, it's pretty, it, it's pretty incredible. I mean, when you look, it's, they say, you know, it's part Tron, part anti-chamber that I'm getting a strong anti-chamber vibe and I'm immediately like, yeah, Fuck off. like get, get away from me. Oh no. <laughs> I want to go on that trip. But I think like, I don't, I mean, anti-chamber was sort of designed to like, just screw with, you. with your mind. Yeah, where I think yeah. this is kind of more of a like, 
you know, it's it is true discovery, but with through me, I don't know. I'm a music guy, so I'm a sucker for music sure. games. You know, I'm automatically yeah, yeah, pulled yeah. in. But every time I saw it and I, I watched them like build music to unlock, you know, the key to the next stage, I was just like, oh my god, I'm so playing the shit out of this game, like you, you wouldn't believe. Uh, and I mean, it yeah, looks, looks good. quite gorgeous. So. Um, it, yeah. yeah, you can pre-order it now. I think next week it comes wow. out. So, yeah, check it out. You reminded me of another uh, music game that I saw. Did you did you see Centris by any chance? I didn't. I think I, I heard some people sort of talking about that, though. Yeah, it's uh, it's from uh, an, an indie developer in Seattle, uh, Samantha Coleman. Uh, and uh, it's really cool. It's um, it's different than this. It's more. Um, it's like a puzzle. It, it's it's definitely a music game, but it's a puzzle game. Uh, she's a musician, and it's actually like you can't lose in the way that like no matter what you do, you're still creating music. You're creating like layered beats and sound waves. But in addition, there's a whole puzzle element that's super. Uh, like it takes like a good twenty minutes, at least for me, at my brain level, to even grok what I was supposed to be doing. What is it called? But again? you're kind of like move. It's called Centris. Uh, it's it's either C E N T R I S or S E N T R I S. Um, and I apologize for not knowing the difference. Uh, it's you'll find it one way or the other. Oh yeah, I found uh, it. Centris. S E N T R I S. I can show it here. Yeah. Um, as you know. It, it, Definitely, I think it has a lot of potential as, as a music, uh, you know, for music fans. I know that the harmonics guys actually, uh, just to give it some credibility, they were all into it and they were all big backers on uh, uh, Kickstarter for her, uh, which is a nice vote of confidence from some sure. big time, you know, music game makers. Yeah. Oh, there's so, a video anyway. here. Jeff Green plays Centrist. Look at that. Yeah, so, uh, right, I do have. Uh, I did actually uh, uh, do a thing on it um, like because I really do out? believe it. it. It's really cool. No, it's not out. Okay. She, she was demoing it at, at, at the show. Yeah. Oh, wow. Some mm. of those skins are pretty pretty epic. Oh, that's cool. I think I ha have seen it. Maybe I haven't. I don't know. A lot of these music games, unfortunately, tend to like yeah. blend into one. <laughs> <laughs> they do. I, I agree with you. This one is really it, – it's – I mean, looking at that game screen, it's hard to really tell, but you're you're trying to like match pieces uh, if you hold it there, like in the center. So you're starting from the outside, and you have to like, it's a matter of like patiently placing pieces so that they match way inside. I, I don't know it's way too hard to describe. Forget it. Huh. <laughs> well, I'll I never mean, be able to do it. It looks like it. I mean, literally with the tagline, sort of unleash your inner musician. That that interests me too. Like I, I, I love I love those types of right. games that reinforce that kind of thing. Like that's the kind of game I want my. Yeah, the cool. The, exactly, and the cool thing is, like, if you're sucking at it as a game, you could just go, oh fuck it, and just start <laughs> making music. <laughs> so you can't really you lose. There you go. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, so the other. Um, uh, the other PAX indie game that I saw that I don't know if it was playable there and I kind of saw it only because we were right next to the next level which is that sort of competitive uh, little game uh, I guess you could say game show that was going on there and there is this game oh, right. called Starwall Have you... oh my it's called Starwall Just the Tip and this okay. game this game oh, oh it's available now i didn't know that yeah. i'm gonna i mean i don't know if this has multiplayer but we, we might have to like play some games of this basically you are a narwhal that floats around in space and everyone's got this beating heart and you basically try to stab each other in the heart and you get points every time you stab someone but it has like a weird uh i mean sort of a hard to master control scheme and I watched the two guys play this in the finals on the next level, and it was just about the most hilarious thing I'd ever seen. <laughs> just the tip. Uh, yeah, just the tip. So interesting. Um, that's nice. I don't know much else about it, but I was watching it, going, "Okay, that's pretty. That's pretty fantastic." Pretty yeah, nice. it's on Steam right now in early access for uh, ten bucks. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. So I might have ten bucks. Okay. Yeah. That's that one. Anyway, heads up. It looked. I laughed the entire time, so that's why it's a good sign. 
And Starwall, just the tip. I mean, the name alone. <clears throat> the name alone will yeah, get you. Yeah, the name is fantastic. Oh, God. Oh, the Secret Ponchos. Cool. I, I love that someone in, in chat just typed, uh, typed Secret Ponchos. Wait, typed what? What? <laughs> uh, uh, typed uh, fucking indie games. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, damn those because, creative indie developers. <laughs> I mean, we could talk about all the triple A's, I guess. But why should we? Yeah, they get enough coverage. Everybody anyway. knows those. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I'd said secret ponchos because even though this and is... And we're, of course, we're psyched for those two. Hell yeah. 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 Even though secret ponchos has sort of been around, I've seen it in a couple of shows, the amount of polish... Uh, on this game is just quite amazing. I love the art style, but you're going to see it soon, I think, on the PS4, huh. uh, if I'm not mistaken. Cool. I don't know if you guys have, have seen this. I bet you've probably seen it not. at the show. But, um, yeah, PS4 and Steam, it's coming out. It's it's sort of like a arcadey western, if you remember. Yeah, it looks really cool, actually. It's very huh. cool. Very cool. And it's just, I'm blown away at how much... Um, like how much the game has just improved over the couple of of Man, times that art's I've seen actually it. Awesome. It is badass, JP. It's really, how, really like how good. big is this team? They have so much art in this game. This game has actually been, I God, I want to say I played it at least in two thousand and two at a PAX. So maybe PAX Prime two thousand two, I played it, and and it's been around. For a while. But uh, I don't think it comes out until... Let's see. Is it out? Better not be out. Uh, summer. There we go. Yeah. It looks really cool. I, I, I wow, never heard of good. that. Yep. Definitely stay on top Great of that. Great name. Ideas. Yeah, right? I like that one, too. Um, okay. I think that's... Oh, fuck. I saw Galaxy. What is that? Oh, Galaxy. Yeah. It's sort These are of all this, brand new games to me. I'm excited. It's sort of this, um, imagine like a 360 um, sort of stick shooter. Uh, okay, first off, imagine Smash TV, right? How you move and how you shoot. And then you, sure. and then add it that in a ship environment with like jets and momentum. And then give it this super awesome anime cartoon series feel where like each episode sort of has an intro and then as you beat it it like rolls in anime credits and and they've they've constantly got <laughs> the people coming in and 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 doing the um you know doing the the sort of play by play is like oh i can't believe you know we've got to take down this big ship and there's multiple factions so you can fight against everything or you can sort of entice all of the other sort of alien factions to fight against each other it, it's just a really smart how many how cool. many players is it is it four or two I, or? i'm not sure exactly how uh how like the multiplayer works all i saw was pretty much a single player experience um the game's by 17 mm -hmm. bit um, huh right um, and people who don't know who they are they did uh skulls of the shogun oh that game was great mm -hmm. i remember that game yeah being pretty good and also, uh, uh, just further uh, cred, uh, Jake uh, Kasdal, who runs that studio, he was one of the main dudes on Res back in the day. Yeah. Um, so, you know, We've smart guys. And, yeah. Uh, re yeah, really good, really good developers. So, yeah. I, I'm not sure if any of the artwork or any of the stuff, I don't see it. Uh, like some of the anime stuff is just really cool, but just seeing the ship combat, you can tell that it doesn't rely on just you know having the anime gimmick oh, to be I, okay, cool. Okay, I have seen this for, before. Yeah, I'm looking at the at the artwork and the actual game. I've seen this before. It looks great. Yeah, very cool. Looks yeah. to be super intense, almost just like a a living Geometry Wars in a way, with just crap coming at you all the time. I, I just I love those types of games. Mm -hmm. so, cool yeah. Stuff. It looks mm -hmm. a little bit more free compared to like uh, something like um, like Resogun, right? Right. We're kind of on a track. Mm -hmm. This one looks a little bit more open. Yeah, and there'll be uh -huh. different episodes, and yeah, it's we'll see how it turns out. But cool stuff. Yeah, it looks cool. Yeah. I think that was all the cool stuff I saw there. So I, I kind of want to like talk about PAX more in a broader term. I, I feel every year when uh -huh. I go to the show that with the advent of like Twitch, 
and the amount of stuff that is streamed there every single weekend, like they get all of the good panels. They get everything that I actually care about to where I kind of feel like the person at home gets the better experience most of the time, unless you're really into like going to a con and like being there in person. Like I, I remember going to the giant bomb panel and a lot of times I was pretty far in the back because I showed up like two minutes before they started. <laughs> but uh, like, a lot of the audio, I was just having a hard time hearing, and then I, I went home and watched the stream a little bit afterwards, and like it was pristine. And so, like, do you guys think that 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 is taking away from PAX in a sense, or is it is the draw still there for everyone? Um, Personally, I think the, the the show is so many different things to so many different people. You know, mm -hmm. like when I walked around, you know, I think it was, there were some people who clearly were just there. I shouldn't say just, but they were there like to play board games with their friends or, or play That's board true. games with, with, with strangers, you know, or there were people who spent their whole time in their retro, you know, arcade rooms. So, and I, so probably there's people there who just go for the panels or there's people who are just there to see the indie games. Like there's so much to do at the show. My feeling after ev every PAX, when I leave, it's like, Jesus, I saw and did nothing because there's so much to do. You know, it always feels a little frustrating. Like, God, I, I wish we could have a week here or maybe actually just live here and just, you know, go to PAX all the time because there's so much to do. So I do. I definitely hear what you're saying, but I, I, I think there's just so much going on at that show, you know, that um, people really just have to pick and choose. For me personally, I didn't want to wait in, in the AAA lines because it just felt like, uh, there's only so many hours in the day here. I don't want to spend three of them in a line yeah. just to see one game for 10 minutes. Um, yeah. And about the panels, um, uh, you know, I think it's sort of like a live sporting event, right? Like if you're there, if you're at a football game or baseball game, like you're getting the thrill of, of mm -hmm. being part of the crowd and seeing it That's live. True. But of course your seat, unless you're rich, is like 10 times shittier than what it's going to be on TV. I, I take right, this. So Pete, yeah. uh, I, well, I was going to. I take this sort, of, yeah. sort of like really kind of, I think, odd approach to it in that I think about the amount of money that these guys spend, not only <laughs> to run the convention, but to like have a booth. And to me, like you're if you're spending that money and always limited to like this traffic, this amount of people, this, you know, PAX is is special. And I guarantee you that just people seeing streams and stuff from there will make them want to go to an official event. But at That's the same true. token, it sucks mm -hmm. to like have to deny all of these people like potentially great content and insight and, and marketing and exposure, it sort of, it seems to me like that perfect synergy. It's just like when I remember when I could sit down in my living room and watch E3 conferences for the first time, I might have had the largest boner, you know, in a lot. I mean, it was massive. <laughs> we, I was dude, just like. We, I'm, E3 week is my best week oh, of the year. I, I wake up every morning. I've yeah. fucking got some breakfast, and right. I'm just chowing down and get to watch the streams. It's awesome. Right, and so it's literally the best thing. I, I mean, like every year, of course, I'm not the, usually I'm there, but if I'm not, like that was what I I did, and I sort of feel like why can't these events have a similar you know feeling to it? It it doesn't have to be big. And PAX is yeah. all about yo, we want people to be exposed to this. So to me, it's exciting to see yeah. that more people are watching the panels. I think they make them more popular. Um, I don't know. I'm, I mean, I totally see where you're coming from. But on, this, on the flip side, like we're fortunate to be able to go to these events and be able to share sure. this stuff live. Like, I think we're it's not the guys yeah. fighting for oh tickets. And stuff right, like that, right. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, the thing sells out right away. It, it really is a privilege to be able to go. Mm. And uh and yeah, I mean, I think the streaming and the and the video in general is just like incredibly awesome. It's such a great, That's great true. change from the way it used to be. I agree with you. And you know, uh, uh, we you know the Twitch booth itself like grows every every show, you know, and the and the Twitch coverage grows every show. You know, it, it's really to me part of inherently part of the experience now. You know, and and it just shows how, like how big. Not to just plug Twitch because. You're on Twitch, and we're on Twitch right no, this second, should, but Jeff, still. You definitely, you should. <laughs> okay, Twitch is awesome. But, um, you know, it really has changed a lot of the nature of things, you know. I mean, at, at, 
like Twitch sort of came from out of nowhere and now is like so dominant in the industry in general. But even at a show like this, it was I thought I felt very crucial to the, the whole experience. You know, yeah, it's uh, it's actually not been that. I think this is only the fourth packs where panels have actually been streamed. So. And this it's one still, was much better right. than all the others. Yeah. You guys, you guys did a ton of panels yeah. that were streamed. Um, and the, the best part is you didn't even hit like 50% because there's so many panels <laughs> throughout the weekend. That's the other thing. Like, will that ever happen? You know, will that? And and frankly, yeah. you know, what's, what's, what's interesting is you could almost just, I mean, panels are like one of the, the most popular things at PAX. Like obviously, you yeah. go in the tabletop room and you see, oh, my God, there's as many people Dude, here as there are in the other massive. room. I didn't well, even realize that existed. I'm, crazy. I'm surprised that, like, more uh, events don't, you know, really try to uh, double down on the amount of, like, panels. I mean, there's so many great talent and personalities there all the time. PAX, PAX has it figured out, shit, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It would be I, I don't maybe you guys already did this so forgive me if you did because I don't know because I was so busy at the show myself but what I was thinking would be awesome and, and again if you're doing it then then you're awesome but uh, well you're awesome anyway I'll just keep kissing your ass today I don't know why I'm in that mood you're so great um, is uh, to have like a like almost twenty four seven like Twitch sort of like a you know, like a sports center, like now we're going to this room where these get where Tim Schaefer's about to speak. And now back to you on the show floor where we're going to take a look at, at Galaxy. And now we're going over right. to the tabletop room. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that would probably cost a billion dollars, but it would be super. They're fun. almost there. They, they've got like they, they bring in devs and stuff. But the, a lot of the times when that's over, I don't know what you guys show on stream in between the breaks. Is it just filler content? You or know, do you know uh, Marcus? It's interesting because as the. You know, as the technology and as we've done this four times, we're we've gotten better at like some of the uh, stages being connected. So when one thing finishes, you know, you can at least be like, OK, you're you know, we're showing you what's on uh, PAX channel two right now. So there's like some sort of continuity okay, and content where it's not totally just like, OK, well, now here's 15 minutes of commercials. Yay. And that's a hard thing to do. I mean, that is like it's Jeff really said, hard. like, you know, companies spend spend millions of dollars to perfect that uh, in, in the past yeah. for, for, you know, for this and that. Um, so it, it, it's, a, it's a hard thing to do. But, you know, yeah, as it improves and I think as even uh, conventions like PAX get more comfortable with it, you know, I, they, they obviously see the benefits of it. And I believe one day they'll say, hey, let's figure out what it will take to put a stream in every single uh, panel room. And let's literally yeah. be able to document our event in such a way. And it, it's, it's getting right. closer. It's just, you know, it's still yeah. we talk about it like, oh, yeah, everyone should do this. That. But shit, man, like technically, like. It's, it's still hard to do. Twitch still oh, wearing sure. some diapers, you know, sure. like oh, growing totally. up and just getting rid of the past far. So I'm sure as uh, as it keeps yeah. going, it'll get better in that regard. Too. It, I mean, it's a million miles from what it was just a couple years ago. I mean, not just Twitch, but this whole experience. Yeah. Well, two years yeah. ago, we didn't even have live streaming of packs. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. right. We're right. already up. Yeah, we've already won. It's up crazy. That. It's such a. It's so awesome. It, it's just so awesome for people who are not there to be able to see this stuff. And and you know, like you said, JP, even those of us who are there, who don't have good seats or didn't have the time or missed something or whatever. Right. Uh, it, it's so great that it's like losing sort of the exclusivity that it, it needed. Totally. You know. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I flew out on Sunday and and on the plane i was watching the acquisitions incorporated stuff that uh that they do so like that was awesome that was great it, i i wasn't even at the show and i was watching like one of the the most important things to me uh to to watch there so yeah pretty cool i remember last year at uh at e3 i was getting on a plane um when when sony had you know their famous like here's how you here's how easy it is to to yeah you know, to play a game you know, or to, to get a used game or whatever and give a game to your friend. And I, and I was on the plane at the time and we were about to take off and there were like me and like three other people on the plane all with our iPads watching this thing in real time. You know, it's the flight attendants going, guys, you got to turn that shit off. But to me, like it was a moment of like, how cool is this that we're all like on a plane yeah. watching this? Like I know it may seem – mundane to younger people but like that was like inconceivable years ago that that would happen 
Jeff, yeah. I still marvel in amaz- amazement when like I see my eight year old holding an iPad, and I realize like. When I was eight, if I, I mean, that was shit in my <laughs> dreams, right? A television <laughs> that you're basically carrying around that this is big. Seriously. Like, you know, I'm sh- definitely, you start to show your age when you just look oh, at seriously. technology differently that way. Oh, and you're my like, God. Oh, my fucking God. Like, yeah, that's a whole, that's insane. a whole show all on its own. We could, we could go on about that. Jeez, man. Yeah. I tell you. All right. Uh, well, okay. One go last ahead. thing. Yeah. What do you think about Pac South? Oh, I'm I'm all for it. Me too. It's awesome. I was walking. I was walking over the convention center on uh, Saturday morning, and my someone. They, I I think they sent me an email because I was on the the press list or whatever. And uh, I'm moving to San Antonio. I, Jeff, I'm not sure if you were aware of that. So like, I immediately was just like, "Fuck yeah!" <laughs> I just, like, <laughs> when when got breakfast after that, text my brother. He was stoked. Um, I, I see a lot of people saying though, like, "Is it?" Is the timing of being early January, right after CES and right before all this other shit, is that going to be too hard on the the uh, what is it the the people that go to these things to present stuff? Is it too much? Yeah. Uh, so you know, at first I was like, wow, you know, that's that's kind of crazy, but it's really evident when you go to a PAX that it's a lot more than just the show floor, right? I mean, we just mentioned it. JP, you and I were both like, holy crap, because you can walk out of the show floor and into just the tabletop portion of PAX, and there were as many, if not more, people in that room than there was. Then you think about the panels. Then you think about people who just came and got together and partied as buddies. Mm -hmm. And and Mm -hmm. I think that... PAX almost begins to represent less about that triple A experience and announcement on the show floor and more about it just being a a celebration of gamers. It's like what I remember QuakeCon to be in its early days. That's a good point. That's sort of, that's how I feel. I mean, the one thing that it's, that it's, which it's actually isn't like they have a big BYOC area too. It's just, right. uh, You don't even see it though. You don't. Right. It's huge. It is. It's huge. So there's all of these different aspects of it that I think it's like, you welcome that a year. It, can, it might be a little rough on some industry folks if, like, you're just going because there's a lot of companies that were like, yeah, we can be there. There's another subset of gamers we can reach. But I yeah. think it's going to show that PAX will less and less become that you're hearing big fucking announcements here from AAA games. More like, hey, we announced this at E3. We're showing it off. Or, hey, it's coming out or whatever. And then the indie guys, boom, they get their spotlight. I'm yeah. totally fine with that. I think it's amazing and great. And and if there's three more of these in the U.S., I will not complain. I, I agree totally. And I think if you think of these things in terms of like, you know, uh, what they are, which is a fan convention, it just gives more opportunity to more people in the country or in the world, really, to be able to experience this thing and not have to take a long flight. I mean, now it enables people down in Texas and neighboring states to go and, and where it might have been harder for them to get to Boston or Seattle. Sure. Uh, so it's letting more and more people have exposure to this, as well as the indie devs too. Like I assume, I would assume that like now at at uh, PAX South, a lot more of Austin developers and people yeah. from oh, yeah. that area will be able to go, right? Like I don't think it was a coincidence right. really that there were a lot of Canadian developers at PAX East, right? It's just geographically closer. Just close, yeah. And there's a t- like Austin's a gigantic hotbed now for game development and game developers. They they have so much stuff up there, yeah. Um, or I guess down there for, from where I, from where I'm at right now. But um, I think it'll be cool. I, we'll we'll see. San Antonio is kind of a boring city in the sense <laughs> that it doesn't have like much nightlife, except everyone knows, of course, the Riverwalk. Uh, and that place on like Fiesta weekend, which is a big weekend for it's pretty packed. But I think PAX is gonna like really, really surprise people how many people are gonna oh, be yeah. there. I so why do you think be... they picked uh, San Antonio instead of Austin? Cheap as hell compared to Austin. Ah, uh, okay. Austin, Thank if you, you live like if you live downtown, it's like super. It's like L.A. style of price. Okay. But PAX. San Antonio is, I think, like. The low, one of the lowest uh, cities when it comes to uh, price, cost of living. It's just so, so okay. cheap down there. Okay, makes sense. Pax Denver next. 
<laughs> oh my god. Midwest. That's, just, yeah. I mean, honestly, I'm so happy that they're like, hey, this is cheap. There's developers down there. Let's do it. Like, I'm so, you know, I'm actually so jaded by East Coast and West Coast events because that shit's expensive. And yeah. I can't even imagine, like, you know, I'm thankful that I get to go and my company is like, you know, they pay for my transportation out there and all this stuff because I'm like, oh my God, what it, this would rack. I mean, this would just start to add up big time. The nice thing, like, too, is that the airport used to be pretty shitty in San Antonio, but they just ended up, I think they're finished with construction. If not, they will be done by the time PAX rolls around. So it won't be as expensive to fly in and fly out of there as it used to be. Because um, it's usually a Southwest hub, and Southwest, yeah. you can't, the, I think one of the deals is that with Southwest, you have to connect to neighboring uh, states or something like that. There's some weird law that they signed a long time ago. Huh. So. Well, I'm, we'll all for, uh, I'm all for PAX Denver. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. They could just great. have like th three days of music games, probably. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll all be, be happy. Event. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think we'll all be happy for another reason, but we won't go into that. Well, that's... <laughs> yeah. 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 So, yeah, that was PAX, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that, that was PAX. It was good. It was a great time. Such um, a great... I always have, always have a great time there. You know, one, one thing about the triple, triple A's there that I was thinking... Was that you know it really didn't start that way either with PAX. It's sort of like PAX started as what it started as a fan convention, right? And it, and the Triple A's weren't there. It was sort of like the Triple A's realized down the line, right? They were like, oh shit, we should go to PAX because there's all these there's this like incredible you know conglomeration of of like our most passionate fans. So I think they've invaded the show more lately than they were like originally part of the show. Yeah. Like the show floor itself wasn't the biggest deal at the time, and it's become that, which is super cool. But if the balance tilts the other way back again, I'd be okay with that. Me too. I'm totally yeah. fine with that. All right, I'm gonna throw a couple things out here. I'm gonna go to my uh, I'm, I'm, because I've been traveling. First and foremost, Hearthstone US officially released. Um, I, I, Apple is selling iPads today, you guys. This week, oh, yeah. they are selling a fuckload of iPads, <laughs> man. I, I swear to God, I must have 15 people who I've talked to in the last three, four days that are like, yep, iPad Seriously? Purchased. Yep, iPad that was purchased. it. Just took a wow. stone. Um, and, and wow. just the people you play, you can tell that this is hitting a whole new audience. Oh, people. yeah, they're really bad. I, I mean, you are just – you go in, play a casual game. Dude, if you've been playing since it come out on the PC, you're going to be like, holy shit, like is there a, a terrible AI that they have actually programmed for this? Not the case. <laughs> just kind of people who are learning the game, which is great because it shows growth. Anyway, uh, really, really good. Uh, and, and they seem that they've already improved some of the – um, issues, like some of the minor frame rate issues I had mentioned before. So – what happens if you don't have an internet connection? Do you just play the AI? No, I don't think you can even log in, JP. Really? Yeah. Oh, you, shit. You have to be connected to your Battle.net account. It's the only way that they can combat people not being able to just do shit hack with cards and hack yeah, and makes stuff. Sense. So, can you not even like look at your own deck? And... I do not believe that you can, sir. I think you have to have... Interesting. Um, yeah, I think you have. Yeah, to. I believe there there hasn't okay. been like a big uprising about that. No, honestly, because that's pretty common on the cloud front or for mobile. You know, like saving shit on the cloud. It's not not everywhere. I'll tell you what. Here's something funny. Guess what? FTL wouldn't even load when I couldn't connect to Game Center. Oh really? shit! Yeah. So because apparently uh, wow. the way achievements work and stuff. So. Uh, you know how of how many times we like don't have I I mean you could turn it off and everything but like I could not get it to load until uh, yeah but wait a minute but I played FTL on the plane no, from yeah, yeah. I, I had to turn I had to turn it off uh huh and and before I could get FTL to load uh, I, oh my game I see what you're saying because I, I was yeah, like okay. in Wi-Fi so it was just. Yeah. I mean, like, there's all sorts of uh, uh, of things where I come across all the time where there's games like I can't play because I, I need the Wi-Fi connection. Uh, yeah. But you need this is straight up like you have to have it. You have to have it. So I, I guess it's sort of fair. I guess it would it would be nice though if you couldn't play the game at all because of a connection. You could at least just like dork out That's on your cards. cards. Make make your own decks like experiment. Yeah. Save it offline and then it sends it to it when it gets a connection or something like that. Yeah. 
Yeah. Maybe. I don't know what, what that would harm. I mean, you can't cheat. There might be some way to like dupe cards or some. I mean, there's some nefarious people out there that you could probably. I yeah. I've got every legendary. What? Yeah. <laughs> um, I I just picked it up yesterday and I hadn't played it at all. Oh. You know, I, I played it last year at PAX when they demoed it on the iPad, and uh, I loved it so much then that I didn't want to play it on PC. So I haven't played. Uh, I just started last night, just unlocking the heroes, and I played a few random games against strangers. And uh, Jesus, it's so good. It is. It's it's really nice, and it's available now. Uh, coming on Android soon. I will say though that uh, I have an iPad three, and it's pretty laggy. At it times, is but. okay. So I know that they've made a few improvements, but I have. So wait, that's that's before Retina. It's Retina, right? No, it's Retina, but not an it's Air. Just, not an Air. Okay. And so. there have been a couple times where. Um, I felt I thought like the game had crashed, but it was actually just the hamsters were spinning inside my okay. iPad. Interesting. Mm. Yeah. Uh, not not so much that it killed it for me, but if I had less than an iPad three, I would probably recommend not buying this game. Or not, it's free, but <laughs> you're, you're you're gonna have trouble. Let's put it that way. I see. Oh, I, I should look and see if there is too. a video option setting. I never even looked TGM. Oh, that's a good, that is a good that's question. That's a good point. Because if you could honestly, turn off all the animations, it'd probably be great. Yeah, if you could turn off animations, right. Yeah, it's some weird stuff. But, um, the, is it, there... Um, oh, go ahead. A, 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 sorry, just a question for you guys. Is there any ability to chat with players or no? No. They just uh, added... Well, not in iPad. But, you okay. know, they, they, they've made a bunch of changes to the actual Battle.net client uh, on on like the PC to where yeah. now you can chat in the Battle.net client and I understand really? one. Yeah. Yeah. You can now like uh, I can. Well, no, no, I know that. But are you about to say you can chat in Hearthstone? You can chat in Hearthstone. But but during a game. Oh, no, not during a chat. game. No, okay. no, no. You yeah. still not during no, a game. Oh, no. I'm sorry. I misunderstood. Yeah. No, you never. I mean, I guess that's good, right? It that's is the one thing that I actually like because I, one, I'm not like. I'm not able to tell the other person how much I fucking hate them for drawing some card. <laughs> yeah. And two, they're not able to tell me how much I'm a piece of shit for drawing yes, a card. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I suppose it's a good thing. I mean, I, w when I played my first game, it was actually this morning against a real person. I admit my gut reaction was relief. Like, I was like, okay, good. They can't tell me I suck. Right. They can't tell me to hurry up. It'd be infuriating if someone's just like, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, suck, fuck you, the whole time. Game, stop, stop. Right. Yeah. Because, of course, that's what they're thinking because that's oh, yeah. what we're thinking, too. I mean, when I stream the game, I'm just like, this stupid motherfucker, and I'll play. Right, right, hard. right. Like, this bullshit. <laughs> right. Fuck. So it almost feels like you're playing AI in a way because, you, as far as you're concerned, it could be anything, right? right. It could be a robot on the other side. What, what happens if uh, someone quits out? Can you rage quit out and what happens? Uh, it just actually the it's game has like a built in accelerator mechanic where it will either just drop them or it will make it so there's no countdown for them. So basically once it's their turn, it'll just the fuse will go tss, and then it's your turn okay. again and you'll just beat them. I, I think so that's okay. I think it's there to make sure that you just don't drop from the game and then the award wins that way because that would probably open it up for like two oh. packs and shit. So they've got a couple built-in things. It, it's a it's a pain in the ass, but so if I'm playing you, and you know it, it's the score is now thirty to five, you're kicking my ass supremely, and I'm just like, oh fuck it, this is awful and embarrassing. I want to go have some cereal instead. You just and concede. I d oh, I, you, is there a concede? Yeah, button? there is. You hit the. It's oh, it's kind of okay. silly because it's you hit the settings button, and then there's an option to con yeah to yeah. I need like a little white flag that's waving somewhere on the map. Yeah, they just do. like, oh yeah, Fuck watch it. this home screen. How do you like <laughs> me now? <laughs> well, that's what I was wondering. If someone just does that, what happens to nah, the it, person who was winning? Yeah, yeah, it just it it like it treats you like you just went AFK, like you're in a normal game. And okay, okay, that's, that's funny. Fair All enough. right, uh, we got it a few minutes for the top of the hour. Uh, uh, real quick, real quick. Uh, what was the oh Trials Frontiers? 
that's the that's the iPad one, right? The after, iOS one. After seeing Trials Fusion everywhere at PAX, and I'm just like, terrible. oh man, Trials Fusion, Trials Fusion, Trials Fusion. I'm like, oh, Trials Frontier came out. Let me let me try this out. Uh -oh. Ener energy system controls oh, no. just. Like, I mean, it looks good, and it has, like, this little RPG story element to it. It certainly feels like a mobile experience, but I'll tell you what. The stamina system just kills it immediately. Hmm. Yeah, just... Yeah, I've heard it. Another heard fucked up mobile weird. game. Yeah. Anyway. All right, anyone want to talk about something before we before we take a quick break and we can finish up? I, I know there's still quite a few on this list here. A lot I'm on that list, though. Yeah, what, Jeff, go ahead. No, no. You well, go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well, let's see what I want to talk about. Um, talk about playing FTL for the first time, JP. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We can talk about FTL. Uh, so I started playing that. I, I bought FTL. I was telling Jeff like a year and a half ago or right, something like yeah. that. And I just never played it. I never booted it up. I knew exactly what it was. I knew what to expect, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I think I booted it up uh, two days ago because I've just been... Incredibly bored. I have I have terrible gamer ADD right now, so I've just been literally downloading a game, playing it for five minutes, deleting it, downloading another game, playing it for five minutes, deleting it. Like I did that live on stream with uh, one of my buddies, Ryan, the other day. It was it was gross. Um, so I, I downloaded FTL and I played for probably about five minutes, and and there was a an image that uh, that Brad Shoemaker tweeted me, where the first image is a dog, and it's like he's got the chemistry set, and he's like, I have no idea what yeah. I'm doing. It's like five minutes of FTL, first five minutes of FTL. And that's what I felt like, like no idea what the fuck I'm looking at. I have no idea what these mechanics are. Mm -hmm. Second one is 10 minutes into FTL and it's like, uh, it's Adama from Battlestar Galactica. He's sitting there like behind the screen. He's got his hands full. <laughs> it looks like he knows exactly what's going on, right? <laughs> and that's exactly how I felt, right? And then it says 15 minutes into FTL, and it just shows people like flying in midair with like explosions happening on the set of Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> and that's exactly how I felt 15 minutes into the game because I just died horribly to some random shit that I didn't know what the fuck was going on. So it's got the, I, and I'm still learning things today. Like I, I played last night, I was up probably till 3 or 4 a.m. And I think it was like my third actual run. I ended up getting to the final, the the Rebel fla flagship nice. or whatever it is. I'm playing nice. it on easy, um, and I don't uh -huh. pause all that often just because I don't know. I, I I I'm not tactical enough to know what to do in like tense situations where I rather just let them play out in real time. Um, yeah. But I haven't beaten it yet, at least on easy. Wait, when you got to the when you got to the ship, did you? Oh, I just got massacred. It was just a I. I I now understand that, like... Do you want me to ruin your day? What's that? The, you, that boss is, like, that boss that you kill, and then, oh... Oh, he's, got, he's got three forms or whatever, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, So, like, and, and the best part was I didn't even die to him. I ran after, like, fighting him for five minutes or like, mm -hmm. 30 seconds and died to, like, one of the other ships that just attacks you there because they yeah. boarded me with, like, ten guys... I was just like, uh, well, I'm fucked. Like, I don't this know game is so hard. It, it's yeah. so hard. I'm convinced that this game has some sort of advanced AI that is hell-bent on fucking you at every single turn. Like, yeah. I cannot tell you how many times I have had, like, some of the most epic starts in this game where I'm like, Holy shit, if I get past this sector, like nothing will stop me. And then I'll yes. fly into like a single nebula, and there'll be like an AI controlled drone that will have two beam drones and like and and just and just be like in, in two moves. Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah, fuck my life, you know, I yeah. cannot believe. But at the same time, it says a lot about the game when I'm like. I you can't wait to man. press the button to go back in. Yeah, I just yeah, fucking it, love it, this. To me, game. it's one of the ultimate, the ultimate, just one more game. Games. Oh man, you guys should really watch uh, Lethal Frag, the Twitch streamer. He plays, uh -huh. uh, he plays on hard with no pause, and he's done seven wow. out of thirty-eight ships. It Holy is like shit. a marvel to watch him play. Are you he's been it on seven. What, what is the name of the Lethal what is Frag? His name again? I'll, uh, okay. I'll link it in the chat. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. I got to watch he's a, that. He's a big streamer here. But yeah, he is like, and the best part is he's like playing like one handed. And he's just like, 
very casually, like talking with his chat, like welcoming, welcoming people, people to his uh, channel and Was stuff that, like do that. Do you know if that's before AE or after? He's playing AE right now. But I mean, because like. I I I got the it. The reason no, he started that's... playing it again is because he's playing AE. So he's he's cleared. I watched him do a full run of uh, NG ship A last night, and I think oh he might have gotten NG God, ship B. Oh my God, dude! But like he's he understands the game through and through, and he just sits there like stroking his beard, no pause, hard runs. <laughs> the, I'm I'm jealous, man. I'm I don't know. Jealous. Yeah, that's like some other level of humanity that I'm not well, at. He he's I'm, logged over six hundred hours in the game, so like he knows. Okay, well that helps a ton about the game. Like he knows so all he the choices. Know, what yeah, get. yeah, that's where I fail. I fucking fuck up on choices. And he, all he knows time. like specific yeah. builds because a lot of the times, and and I'm realizing this as I play. Like, the game gives you choices and gives you weapons and stuff like that. And if you like make a bad build, you can really fuck the entire. You can fuck the game over for yourself. Yeah, but if you choose like the right stuff that plays well with each other, or or has a good build for your ship, then you can really do well. And that that's what he knows from what I can tell is like, he'll do like a, a five laser ship or some shit, and uses all this jargon that I have no idea what it means at this point because sure. I don't know the game that well. But uh, he seems very very like understanding of the entire mechanics of the game, and I think that's how he can do that. But it, it's it's awesome to watch. Doing it in AE is such an impressive feat. I'm like I'm taught because. There's so many new things they added to it, and it's just like it's not you that gets them. It's them, too. So, right. you know, they – oh, fuck. Oh, God. I love this game to death. It's so good. It's it. so good. It's, it's pretty it. good. It's pretty addicting. Wait, so do you have to buy the Advanced Edition if you own it on Steam? No. Or, it just, it dude, just know, gives it to you for that. free. That's it's so I'm smart. Gonna, I'm going to play some of it. I, oh, damn it. I'm going to have to unlock all my shit. <laughs> the re oh, all that stuff. You play on iPad? I've primarily. been playing on iPad, yeah. Why don't you just uh, hook up your iPad and stream that? I could do that too. I do oh, like the iPad to... interface. There's like a couple oh. things I hate. I hate that the. Um, you probably relate with this, Shep, but like, you know, when you have your missile, or actually your missiles, your, your weapon tab open, you yeah. have to close it to yes. return everyone to their positions, yes. and that is so annoying. I'm like, dude, there is so much empty space all yes. over, and you have totally. to... Totally. I have the same problem with the doors, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, or, where you have to click it, and then, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, it's a minor annoyance. For the, the, the privilege of being able to play such an awesome game on a, on a mobile platform... It's it's great, but yeah, there's a few annoyances I would I would fix if it were me. Yeah. But first, I have to be able to beat this thing on easy before I can really complain about it. I, I was <laughs> I was pretty close last night, and like the thing is, when when you when you die, no matter what you're doing, it, whether it's your first or whether it's your fiftieth run, like you learn so much about the game in yeah. that run. The because thing that's now, hard. Yeah, go ahead. Now I'm just like I know exactly what I'm supposed to do next run. Like, I was uh, I was just going through each system and trying to get to the end immediately, right? Yeah, but that's actually bad. Like, you should try it to spend is. as much time getting as much spare parts and doing all the distress beacons and going places and going into the nebula because then it slows like the rebels down. You can have more time in that certain sector, and right. And that's what I fucked up on. Where like I watched Lethal Frag and he's like. Probably in some of them, he's actually fighting the rebel forces before moving on, just to right. get some extra spare parts. Yeah, to me, that's like a an, yet another whole aspect of the challenge of the game. It's like in addition to just like the sector by sector combat, it's like managing your fuel versus how right. much time you should be spending in in any one area. Right? I mean, because yeah, if you zip through, you're just not going to be prepared. Yeah. Uh, you're not going to have enough resources to have properly upgrading your ship to, to deal with the end yet it's so easy to just stay there a little too long and yeah. fuck up your entire game right yeah. you just stay in that, one place oh my god last night my last run i had like i was waiting to go to the next sector and find a store i had like 350 spare parts or or what is it the whatever the the currency is i scrap. forget scrap scrap scrap. Yeah, briefly yeah. scrap i had like 20 fuel and 20 uh drone and like I, I had a really good game going, and then right before I'm about to jump, I run into I, I forgot what it was, but basically I get boarded by five guys and I've got two drones on me out of nowhere in like sector two, <laughs> and I just die in like seconds. I'm just like, 
what the fuck, man? I had like the best thing yeah. ever going for me. I just died immediately. I just fucking quit the game and went to sleep. <laughs> this is this is so the sad. problem with the game, and this is why I have a hard time learning. Like I get what you're saying. Like I feel like at the end of a match, I do I have learned more than last time, but I don't really know how to apply it well because I feel like, okay, now I get it. Now I need to like the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to upgrade my doors to blast doors or whatever it is, whatever it killed me last time. Like if it's the yeah, intruder, that's what you do. Fuck yeah. me up. Whenever you but die, then, that's what you get next time. That's day. what you get the next time, but then then they, they fuck you in a different way the next time. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yep. Yeah. That's the never so I, ending. Yeah. Anyway. All right. So if I like if I already have it, if I already have this it like patched then? Yeah, it just downloads the and then when you play a game you can either choose to play okay, with that okay. unlocked just or not. like the iPad. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, and I've been playing with it turned off just because I know that there's a lot of mechanics. Oh, no, that I it. dude, you need to be <laughs> playing with it on. No, 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 no I, I know all the stuff that it does. It's and so, like, so I'm going to beat it on easy first, and then I'll oh, throw in all the other shit. No, no, you should, you, oh, man, they added, like, so much stuff that makes sense. Like, you can tell they added all the shit they wanted to put into the game, but, like, yeah. you know. The crazy thing, too, that that is... Like, I didn't realize it. I guess I knew, but I didn't think about it. Like, this was one of the first Kickstarter games, right? Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> and it's also made by, like, two people? Yes, it's two people. It's, like, just two guys. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, a beautiful game. It blows me away that, uh, that they were able to do something like that. I really is, wonder. Yeah. I was going to look up the Kickstarter to see how much they actually made. Let's this see. is why we're living in the greatest of times as as gamers, you know, that we yeah. can be playing these games like The Last of Us and Infamous or whatever that just sort of these beautiful AAA experiences. And then, you know, that cost hundreds of millions of dollars. And then you've got a game made by two dudes. Yeah. Uh, so it's just such a great time to be a gamer. It was it was a uh, initially it was it was funded on April 1st, 2012. They Wanted ten grand and they got two hundred thousand. Wow! So they definitely were backed pretty pretty well. Two hundred thousand. That probably is like one third of the cost of that Evolve monster. You know. Well, probably. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> probably. Oh, maybe a fraction. Okay, uh, why don't we take a break? When we come back, we've still got plenty of things to talk about. We figured that we'd have a, a full uh, a full show this week, and, and it's true. Yes. It's going to happen. we still got many more things to talk about. Uh, so, guys, we'll be back in uh, just a little bit. Don't go away. Our second uh, hour of 8-Bits will continue after this. We'll be right back. Yeah. 